Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The thrilling historical fiction broadsword, A Novel of Love Amidst the Chaos by Roger Glasgow, is set in the border area of Scotland during the mid-1500s. Full of suspense, intrigue, and danger, complete with compelling characters and rich historical detail. The Henderson family finds themselves caught up in one of the most tumultuous times of the country's history. A time of fierce rivalries, bloody battles, passionate love, treachery, heroism, and terrible tragedies. It's a book you will never forget. Roger received his Bachelor of Science degree in History and Political Science in 1965 from what is now Southern Arkansas University in Magnolia, his Juris Doctor from the University of Arkansas School of Law in Fayetteville in 1969. After a 50-year career as a trial lawyer in Little Rock, he returned to writing. His first book, a memoir, published in 2016 entitled Down and Dirty Down South, Politics and the Art of Revenge, received an Arkansas Gem Award from the Arkansas Library Association. Broadsword is his debut novel, and Roger Glasgow is our guest on This Week in America. Roger, a pleasure to have you with us. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Rick. Very, uh, very happy to be here. This is such an interesting story that you've told, and you do it with such great detail, and the historical research is there as well. This required some work. What was the inspiration for writing this story? Well, uh, to tell you the truth, uh, I got tired of uh, walking the dog <laughs> and uh, taking the dishes out of the uh, dishwasher after they were washed. That, yes. So, uh, no, that's a joke. Let me tell you the whole story <laughs> on that. Uh, after I retired, after 50 years of trial practice, um, you know, my wife is younger than I am, <laughs> so she's still working. And um, so I was kind of home alone. And I thought, wow, I've got to find something to do. And as you mentioned, I had written this uh, memoir, uh, which uh, did relatively well yes. in Arkansas. It was about uh, political corruption and dirty tricks and how I got caught up in one of their worst dirty tricks they had in their dirty trick bag. Uh, but... Uh, anyway, what inspired me to do it was uh, that I had written a book and I was sitting around the house without anything to do. So I started, I thought, okay, I'll just uh, write this novel and uh, I'll write it uh, as a historical fiction book. Um, because my ancestors came from Scotland, I picked a period of time and off I went. The book is Broadsword, A Novel of Love Amidst the Chaos. Roger Glasgow is our guest on the program. Book available at Amazon, the usual places. We'll let you know uh, throughout the program, and you can go to our website to get more information on the book as well. This really was a fascinating time in history, the mid-1500s. Why did you choose this particular time period for, for your story? Well, I had to have a time period uh, to set the story, and uh, my research indicated that uh, the 1500s, especially the mid-1500s, was a particularly um, eventful time uh, in the history of Scotland. <clears throat> so uh, I selected that period, and I, I selected a, a family to be my chief uh, protagonist family. I was thinking of my own family when they lived in Scotland and Ayrshire, just south of Glasgow uh, in the 1500s and wondered what their life was like. So I sort of, that's what kind of got me uh, started on uh, writing this book. Tell me a little bit about the writing process. I'm always fascinated how a book comes together. Did you see your book from beginning to end sort of an outline either on paper or in your mind, or did you you constructed as you as you went along and did research. Well, Rick, really a little bit of both. Um, I did begin to envision the book um, from thinking about my family living in uh, uh, Ayrshire, uh, Scotland, in the 1500s. This was the period of uh, King Henry VIII of England and 
uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, and the Protestant Reformation, and the Renaissance, and all kinds of uh, events were occurring then that really put together would uh, move uh, Scotland and really all of uh, Europe out of the uh, medieval ages into the modern age. So I thought about this and I began to jot some ideas down. I finally came up with an outline. I started thinking about my characters so and, and uh, I had to read about the history. So a historical fiction book, uh, authors will tell you, is about the hardest book you can write because you can't just start writing and take off. You've got to be sure your uh, story coincides with the history of the times. Well, it's fascinating. The book is so well done, Broadsword, A Novel of Love Amidst the Chaos. Roger Glasgow is our guest on the program. Book at Amazon, as I say, the usual places. Once you pick this time period, and what what a time period it is. The times are, are, are turbulent, certainly, and such so many fascinating stories. You need to create the characters and the roles those characters will play in the story. How did you go about that, the right number of characters, and then sort of weaving the storyline together? What were the challenges in doing that? Um, well, you can find out... Um what families and clans uh, populated that part of uh, Scotland? Uh, that is in the um, uh, in the in the research. Uh, so I, I, I found out uh, what clans were in the area. Uh, I changed the name of my clan to from Glasgow to uh, Henderson, and you've got the Wallaces, and you've got the Kennedys, and you've got the Fergusons, and you've got the Agnews, and you've got the Maxwell's, all of these clans are recorded in the history as living in that area. So I used all of those families and assigned to them a piece of geography to be their territory and started uh, thinking about what kind of story I can write. And I based it really, the history instructed me uh, on the story as um uh, the outlines of the story because I had to follow the history with the story. So that gave me a kind of a head start with it. Well, that's interesting. You mentioned a couple of minutes ago what all was going on, the wars with England involving King Henry VIII, famous, of course, for six wives, Mary Queen of Scots, the, the Protestant Reformation, all of those major events. How was it to take all of those events, take the characters, this world that you've created, and intertwine the two? Uh, talk about that because you do such an excellent job of, of, of piecing, the, piecing this all together and we really feel like we're there living a part of history. Well, the Hendersons, uh, they were the main uh, protagonist family in the book and they had uh, interactions with all of these uh, clans that I've just mentioned. And uh, I began to construct a story of that uh, interaction and if you remember that part of history, King Henry VIII decided that uh, he really wanted to have more influence over uh, Scotland because uh, Scotland's main ally was France and, and, and England and France were kind of in intermittent wars. So his son, Edward, which was the only son that he ever bore, uh, he wanted him to marry Mary, Queen of Scots. They were both just children, but that's the way it was back then. So he wanted them to be betrothed so he could uh, inf uh, exert more influence over Scotland and uh, sort of try to woo them away from France. And that kind of gave me uh, a, a big picture of uh, what the story was going to be like because uh, that was the seminal event, really, uh, in the early part of the book. Besides these great characters and the story that's told, this really was a pivotal time in history. Talk a little bit about that and, and some of the events. And uh, all of the events were, were important, but th this really was a crucial time, a transitional time in history, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, actually, if you put all those things together, the, the Reformation, the uh, Renaissance, uh, the wars that were occurring, 
uh, all of that put together moves you out of the medieval age into the modern age. So that's why that's such an important time in, in uh, history. But uh, my characters uh, move through this uh, story and are involved in many of these historical events, particularly the uh, Reformation. Uh, Scotland was Catholic in large, uh, predominantly Catholic, uh, when the Protestant Reformation began and John Knox was the primary uh, mover of the Protestant uh, religion in Scotland. So it's amazing to me when I read the history of it, how much tension, friction, and really outright uh, warring there was between the Catholics and the Protestants, that plays a big role in my story. The other uh, big piece of history that plays a large role in my story was the Battle of Pinky Clue, and that's right up near Edinburgh. Uh, pinky Clue means, uh, I don't know what pinky means, but clue means a big swamp. <laughs> Okay. Uh, that was one of the most important battles. It's known as Black Saturday by the Scots to this day. And they each uh, side had about 30,000 soldiers, the English and the Scots. But the English had modern weapons. And that's a big part of this story. They had gunpowder guns. The Scots fought with swords and uh, halberds and uh, lances and spears and so forth. So they were no match for the English guns. And uh, the Scots actually got massacred. About three quarters of them got killed or wounded. Uh, and some of my characters, particularly the patriarch, Hugh Henderson of the Henderson family, involved in, actually history shows uh, he was involved in that battle and unfortunately got killed. But uh, that was a big uh, part of the uh, story as well. With us on the program is Roger Glasgow. That's G L A S C G A L S G O W. The book is available wherever books are sold. I'll send you to Amazon. That's the uh, the easiest place, but others as well. You can link on directly by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. The title of the book is Broadsword: A Novel of Love Amidst the Chaos. People who are reading it are saying, boy, this begs for a sequel. What are, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have <laughs> some more that you'd like to share with us? Because you've done such an excellent job of, of painting this picture, telling the story. Uh, a possible sequel? Could that happen? Uh, certainly could. As a matter of fact, I'm already working on one. And I set up, uh, if you read uh, Broadsword, you'll see there's some... Uh, kind of hints of, a, of things to come. And I'm going to flesh out those things to come in this first sequel. Uh, may, if I'm around, live long enough, my brain still works, <laughs> I may do two sequels, so we'll have a trilogy. Uh, so, yes, uh, I'm working on one. This one that I'm working on is called Sea Snake. Um, it's the name of a ship. That uh, plays a prominent role in the early part of that story. So, yes, we're well, going to have more. That's good news for all the fans of uh, Broadsword. The uh, the initial one is out there, possibly two, possibly three. We'll keep you posted on that. It, you mentioned earlier that uh, you'd written a, a book a couple of years ago, a memoir, Down in Dirty South, Politics and the Art of Revenge. Tell me a little bit. We've got a few minutes left in the program. How did that come about? That's such a, a drastic change from the historical novel that you've just written. What was the, the emphasis for the motivation for writing the memoir? Uh, Rick, it was 24 pounds of marijuana. Wow. <laughs> just to, just to uh, <laughs> sum it up, it was 24 pounds of marijuana. And what happened? Uh, I was involved in politics at the time. I was running for district attorney, uh, the, the chief prosecutor for this uh, district, uh, the machine candidate, and I ended up in a runoff. And by machine candidate, I mean that uh, in Arkansas, in little central Arkansas at the time, there was a political machine that pretty much controlled everything. Uh, and they needed the prosecuting attorney's office and had always had control of it for many, many years. And I was uh, threatening their hold on power. 
you know, they were committing crimes. And uh, if they had control of the prosecuting attorney's office, uh, they wouldn't get prosecuted. Yes. So that was a pretty sweet deal. Uh, so my wife and I, I got a job with the law firm that I spent 50 years with. I already had the job. My wife and I decided to take a short vacation down to Mexico. We were coming back through Matamoros, uh, came over the International Bridge into Brownsville, Texas, and lo and behold, guess what? Uh, the uh, rev, rev, the uh, border people found under my back seat the 24 pounds of marijuana. I wow. didn't put it there, yes. but it was put there on behalf of my political opponents who were afraid that I might run again in two years and uh, win the position and threaten their hold on power. That's your, it, uh, The name of that book ahead. is Down and Dirty South, Politics and the Art of Revenge. You have my attention now on, on reading that book as well. That was, uh, that was quite a story, and they sort of take us behind the curtain of what goes on in, in areas like that with the, with the political machine. Well, uh, it rings uh, even today. Yes. Uh, look yes. at the national politics. Yep. Look at the dirty tricks that are being uh, played uh, today. Look, look at all the shenanigans that are going on. Well, this has been happening for a long time. It seems that there are periods of calm where everything goes relatively well, and then all of a sudden uh, somebody pops up and uh, things don't go well. So I think we're in one of those bad periods right now as we speak. You mentioned the 50 years as a lawyer. Is there any correlation between 50 years of, of, of being a lawyer, preparing cases, telling stories in the courtroom, in, in legal documents, in briefs, and and writing? Any correlation between the two? Um, well, legal legal writing, we call it legalese, yes. uh, is um, opposite to popular writing. Have, have you ever taken up snow skiing or water skiing uh, yourself? I've tried miserably from time <laughs> to time. So yeah, I've, I've tried and failed. Let me, let me put it that way. <laughs> uh, it's easy to try and uh, fail, uh, particularly in snow skiing, yes. but they are just opposite sports. I mean, you're, you're pulling yes. on, or you're yes. being pulled by a boat. You're hanging on to a rope and you have to go where the boat takes you. If you're snow skiing, you're leaning forward uh, and, you can go where you want to go as long as it's within the confines of the ski area. So they're just opposite things. Well, that's the way legalese is with popular writing. I found it to be opposite. And writing that book, uh, Down and Dirty Down South, uh, taught me a lot about popular writing. I learned to transition from legalese to uh, fiction. And fiction is even different than writing a memoir. I mean, a memoir uh, is based upon true events, and fiction is just whatever the author can dream up. So it's a completely different uh, genre there as well. A couple minutes left in the program. The book, once again, is Broadsword, a, uh, a novel of love amidst the chaos. Roger Glasgow is our guest on the program what do you hope the reader takes away from from reading Broadsword? It's uh, it's such a compelling story. It, it's a piece of history, a very important piece of history. What do you hope the reader takes away from from reading your book? Well, I think the most important uh, part of that book is following the family, yes, particularly the Henderson family and the members of that family and. They have love lives, uh, they get killed, they have births. Uh, so it's interesting to watch and follow that family. And you know, of course, that that family is going to go on uh, into the sequels. Uh, so I, th I think that's um, how they interact with history and the, and the, the uh, troubles and the challenges of the time is in my view, the principal thing that people will enjoy in these books. Take a, about 30 seconds here. What was this like for you, this experience of writing this book and doing the historical research, finding out about your family as, as you went along in the process and creating these characters? What has this been like for you? 
Well, I, I really enjoy um, history. I was a history major in college, and I really love Scotland. I've been to Scotland several times. I've been down to the same area that uh, is, the, is the principal area of the book. So, um, you know, my law practice taught me to be a storyteller. When you try a case to jury, uh, to a jury, uh, you basically tell them a story based upon what the evidence is uh, in the case. So that uh, in, uh, enabled me, I think, uh, to be a better author of uh, fiction. Uh, so, um, you know, it's uh, you never know what what makes you a good writer, uh, and you never know what what inspiration you're going to get it uh, you can get inspiration from many areas but that just happened to be the area that that I thought I would start uh, my career of writing uh, novels it's kind of like you ever heard of grandma Moses the painter oh, yes yes of course uh, she you know she started painting when she was 78 years old and painted all the way through her 80s and into her 90s so some people wonder why in the world I would start a new career at 78, <laughs> which I happen to be right now. And I guess I'm, my aspiration is to be the Grand Palm Moses <laughs> of uh, writing. <laughs> well, you are a young 78, and I think that, well, cre thank you. that creative flair is what keeps you a young 78. So don't, don't stop. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to talk about sequels to Broadsword, the book that we've talked about specifically, A Novel of Love Amidst the Chaos. Roger Glasgow, our guest on the program, book available at Amazon, the usual places. Roger, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. We'll stay in touch and find out about sequels to Broadsword. Thank you for being with us on the program. Same here, Rick. I really enjoyed visiting with you. It has been our pleasure. Broadsword, a novel of love amidst the chaos. Roger Glasgow, our guest. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.